Lesson 1.5, Rename Numbers, Combine Place Values. We can rename a whole number by drawing a quick picture of base 10 blocks or by using a place value chart to help us. We can draw squares that represent the different amounts of each base 10 block. So these are the base 10 blocks. We've got 1,000 unit cubes here. That's 1,000. This big orange cube is equal to 10 of these blue flats. And each of these blue flats is 100 unit cubes. And each of these blue flats is equal to 10 of these longs, which are 10 unit cubes. We can model the number 1,300 by drawing one square to represent 1,000 and three squares of 100 to equal 300. We draw one square for 1,000, that's one large orange cube, and we make a flat of 100, a flat of 100, and a flat of 100 for the 300. So now we have one large cube and three flats of 100, that's equal to 1,000. 300. We can think of this as two tens or we can think of it as 21s. We rename the two tens as 21s. We can also model 1,300 by drawing 13 flats of 100. So instead of using one large cube for 1,000 and three 100 flats, three flats of 100. We can do 13 flats of 100. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So another name for 1,300 is 13 hundreds. These right here, we have 10 of them in the red circle. That's equal to 1,000. That's 1,000. 300 or 13 hundreds. Because we need 10 of these flats to equal one large cube, we can rename 1,000 as 10 hundreds or 1,000. 1,300 can be 1,000 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100, or we can say it's 10 hundreds plus 100 plus 100 plus 100, which is equal to 13 hundreds. We need 10 of these flats to equal one large orange cube of 1,000. And we need 10 of these longs to equal one flat of 100. So one flat of 100 is 10 times more than one long of 10. And one large cube of 1,000 is 10 times more than a flat of 100. Knowing this, we can rename numbers using a place value chart. So here we have one large cube, which is 1,000 of these little unit cubes. It's also 10 of these. We can take 10 of these flats, and it'll be the same amount as that large cube. Stacking 10 of them is the same amount as the large orange cube. We have 100 in each flat. We have 10 of them. That's equal to 1,000. And each of these longs is equal to 10 units. And if we have 10 of these, it will be equal to one flat of 100. We can line up 10 of the longs, and it's the same amount as one flat of 100. We can model 1,000 by using only longs of 10. Since 10 flats of 100 will model 1,000, and there are 10 longs of 10 in each flat of 100, we would need 100 longs of 10 to equal 1,000. And that's a lot of longs of 10. So if we had 10 times longs of 10, it would equal 100, a flat of 100. And if we had 10 times flats of 100, 
it would be 1,000, like our big orange cube. And we can also divide 1,000 by 10 to find the number of longs in each large cube, but we're not going to get into that until fifth grade. That's two-digit long division. We can use a place value chart to help us rename numbers. Take a look at this place value chart. We have our thousands period and our ones period. We have our hundreds, tens, ones, hundreds, tens, ones, and we can see we have three in the hundred thousands place, and the rest are zero. And we can look at this number, a three with five zeros, as three hundred thousands. We have three in the hundred thousands place. We can also look at it as thirty ten thousands. So see how we're calling it this place value? We went from three in the hundred thousands to now we're using both of them as a thirty for the ten thousands. We can also say that this is three hundred one thousands. We can also call it three thousand hundreds. See? Or it's thirty thousand tens. Or if we use the whole thing we can say it's three hundred thousand ones. That's renaming numbers. We're grouping them to rename them. So when we're doing tests or our homework we can use quick drawings to model the base 10 blocks. We can just make a square and write a thousand in it for the big orange cube that is a thousand. We can make a square and write 100 in it for a blue flat. We can just make a green stick or just a stick with our pencil and that will represent a 10. We can make a little square and put a 1 in it to represent 1's. We can also write the letters TH for 1000 H for 100, remembering that this stick is a 10, and we can make a dot for 1's if we want. For here, we need to rename the number. It tells us we can draw a quick picture or use a place value chart to help. We have 120. We need to know how many 10's that would be. We can draw longs of 10, and we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. We count how many tens are here. We have five and another five. That's 10, 11, 12 tens. We have 1,100. We need to know how many hundreds that would be. We make little boxes with an H for hundred in them, or we could put a little 100 in each one. And we have 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000. That's 1000. 11 hundreds would be 1100. This one says 15 hundreds. We need to rename it and we could use a place value chart and write a 1 here and a 5 here to make 15 hundreds. We need to fill in these place values with placeholders with zeros, and we have 1,500. We also could have called this 150 tens, couldn't we? We could have grouped these three together and said it was 150 tens. Now we have 410,000. We need to know how many thousands that would be. We use our place value chart. We write four, one, zero, and then fill in the other zeros. Here's the thousands place mark, and we can group these three together and say we have 410 thousands. Now we have three hundreds and five tens. We write three in the hundreds place value, five in the tens place value, and we can group them together and say it's 35 tens. We could also rename it as 350. Alicia has 2,000 beads to make bracelets. Each bracelet will have 10 beads. So how many bracelets can she make? So what information do we need? 
we need that she has 2,000 beads and that each bracelet is equal to 10 beads. What do we need to find? We need to find how many sets of 10 are in 2,000. That'll tell us how many bracelets she makes because there's 10 beads in each bracelet. How can renaming numbers help us solve this problem? We can rename 2,000 as tens to find how many sets of 10 make 2,000 because that would be how many bracelets would be in 2,000. What strategy can we use? We can use a place value chart to see how many tens are in 2,000. We write 2,000 in the place value chart and we see there are 200 tens in 2,000. Alicia can make 200 bracelets of 10 beads each with 2,000 beads. See how we started the tens place and only used those digits to see there's 200 after we wrote 2,000? We ignored the ones place and just concentrated from the tens and larger to see there are 200 tens. Alicia sold 42 bracelets on Saturday and 34 bracelets on Sunday. There are 10 beads on each bracelet. How many beads were used to make the bracelets she sold? So each bracelet represents a set of 10. We can use a place value chart. We write the amount of 10s into the chart. There were 42 bracelets on Saturday, so that's 42 10s. There were 34 bracelets on Sunday, so that's 34 tens. We can add and get 76 tens, or we can look at it as 420 plus 340, which is 760. So Alicia used 760 beads. After we write in the 42 for the tens, we put a zero in the ones place as a placeholder. We did the same thing for the 34 tens. We put a zero as a placeholder, and that gave us 420 plus 340. We can also solve this problem by adding 42 bracelets and 34 bracelets. That would give us 76 bracelets. And since each bracelet is a set of 10, we have 76 tens. We write 76 tens, put a zero in the ones place as a placeholder, and we can see Alicia used 760 beads to make the bracelets she sold on Saturday and Sunday. Alicia also made necklaces to sell. She sold 4,000 necklaces in June and 3,000 necklaces in July. If she used 70,000 beads to make the necklaces, how many beads were on each necklace? We can add 4,000 from June and 3,000 from July, and that's equal to 7,000. We rename the 7,000 as 7 thousands. We rename the 70,000 beads as 70,000. Now we can see we're comparing 7 and 70. And we think, how many 7s are in 70? Using division, 70 divided by 7 is equal to 10. Or, using multiplication, 7 times some number equals 70. We know that's 10. We know there must have been 10 beads on each necklace. That's the same amount that she put on her bracelets, isn't it? So remember, we can re name a number by grouping place values together. In our next lesson, 1.6, we're going to add numbers that would be whole numbers in the hundred thousands. I hope I'll see you there. Keep trying hard. I'm proud of you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.